Welcome to our video on DevOps Engineer Interview Questions. DevOps has become an essential skill set for today's technology professionals, with many organizations seeking out talented individuals who can help them build and maintain their infrastructure. If you're looking to become a DevOps engineer, this video is for you. In this video, we'll be covering some of the most common interview questions for DevOps engineer, as well as some tips on how to answer them successfully. We will cover infrastructure as code and CI-CD pipelines along with many other important topics. You'll often be asked about your experience with IAC tools like Terraform and Ansible, as well as your knowledge of cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. We will also discuss tools like Jenkins, Travis CI, or Circle CI, as well as concepts of containerization and Kubernetes. There's a lot to learn and a lot to discuss in our DevOps engineer interview questions video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Also, if you are keen to learn more about DevOps and its concepts and want to attain a job in a renowned company, then Simply Learn's Caltech postgraduate program in DevOps can be the right choice for you. This comprehensive program will equip you with the knowledge and skills needed to master the DevOps principles, tools, and practices. So, dive deep into containerization, orchestration, and automation framework like Docker, Kubernetes, and Jenkins. Gain hands-on experience with cloud platforms and learn how to leverage the power of infrastructure as code. So don't miss out on this chance to transform your career and become an invaluable asset to any organization. Click the link in the description to discover more about this DevOps course. Now let's jump into the video. But before moving ahead, let's first understand what is DevOps. Now DevOps is a set of activities and approaches aimed at enhancing the effectiveness and excellence of software development, delivery and deployment. It brings together the realms of software development, dev and information technology operations, ops. The main goal of DevOps is to encourage seamless collaboration between development and operations team throughout the entire software development lifecycle. It achieves this through the utilization of automation, continuous integration, delivery, and deployment, thereby accelerating the process and minimizing errors in software development. Now, let's explore who is a DevOps engineer. Now, a DevOps engineer is an expert in developing, deploying, and maintaining software systems using DevOps practices. They work closely with IT operations, developers, and stakeholders to ensure efficient software delivery. Their responsibilities include implementing automation, continuous integration, and continuous delivery or deployment practices, as well as resolving issues throughout the deployment process. DevOps engineers are proficient in various tools and technologies such as source code management systems, build and deployment tools, virtualization, and container technologies. But how exactly to become a DevOps engineer? Now, depending on the business and the individual function, different criteria for becoming a DevOps engineer may exist. However, some specific fundamental skills and certifications are frequently needed or recommended. First is an excellent technical background. Now, DevOps engineers should be well-versed in IT operations, system administration, and software development. Second is experience with DevOps tools and methodologies. Now, DevOps engineers should have experience with various DevOps technologies and processes, including version control systems, build and deployment automation, containerization, cloud computing, and monitoring and logging tools. Third is scripting and automation skills. Now, DevOps engineers should have strong scripting skills and be proficient in using tools such as BAS, Python, or PowerShell to automate tasks and processes. Fourth is cloud computing experience. Now, DevOps engineers should have experience working with cloud platforms such as Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. And in the end, certification. Some organizations may require DevOps engineers to hold relevant certifications such as Certified DevOps Engineer, CDE, or Certified Kubernetes Administrator, CKA, or AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Professional. Well, now let us begin with some really important DevOps interview questions and answers as we have already covered the roadmap of how to become a DevOps engineer. So the first question that we are coming up with is how is DevOps different from Agile methodology? Well, 
DevOps is a culture that allows the development and the operation team to work together. This result in continuous development, testing, integration, deployment, and monitoring of software throughout the life cycle. Whereas Agile is a software development methodology that focuses on iterative, incremental, small, and rapid release of software, along with customer feedback. Basically, it addresses gaps and conflicts between the customer and developers. DevOps addresses gaps and conflicts between the developers and IT operations. Now, the second question is, which are some of the most popular DevOps tools? Well, some of the most popular DevOps tools include Selenium, Puppet, Chef, Git, Jenkins, Ansible, and Docker, which are considered really important in today's world if you want to become a successful DevOps engineer. Third question is, what is the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment? Now, we will address this one by one. So continuous delivery ensures that you can safely deploy on to production. But continuous deployment ensures that every chain that passes through automation testing that is deployed to production automatically instead of manually. Continuous delivery ensures business applications are delivered as they were expected. Now continuous deployment makes sure that software development and other processes like release are smooth and faster. Continuous delivery also make changes to a production life environment through rigorous automated testing. But when it comes to continuous deployment, there is no explicit approval for a developer to require a developed culture. Question four is, what is the role of configuration management in DevOps? Now, configuration management enables management of and changes to multiple systems. Also, it standardizes resource configuration, which in turn manage IT infrastructure. Also, it helps with the administration and management of multiple servers and maintains the integrity of the entire infrastructure. Next is, what is the role of AWS in DevOps? Well, AWS has the following role in DevOps. First is flexible services. This provides ready to use flexible services without the need to install or set up the software. Second is build for scale. You can manage a single instance or scale to thousands using AWS services. Third is automation. AWS lets you automate tasks and processes, giving you more time to innovate. Then comes secure. Using AWS identity and access management, you can set user permissions and policies in your organization. And then come large partner ecosystem. AWS supports a large ecosystem of partners that integrate with and extend AWS services. Now, if we talk about the sixth question, that is name three important DevOps KPIs. Now, the three very important KPIs are as follows. Mean time to failure recovery. This is the average time taken to recover from a failure. Deployment frequency, the frequency in which the deployment occurs. Percentage of failed deployments, the number of times the deployment fails. Now, the seventh question is, what are the benefits of using version control? Here are some of the benefits of using version control. Well, all team members are free to work on any file at any time with the version control system. Later on, VCS will allow the team to integrate all of the modifications into a single version. The VCS asks to provide a brief summary of what was changed every time we save a new version of the project. We also get to examine exactly what was modified in the content of the file. As a result, we will be able to see who made what changes to the projects. Now, inside the VCS, all the previous variants and versions are properly stored. We will be able to request any version at any moment. And we will be able to retrieve a snapshot of the entire project at our fingertips. A VCS that is distributed, such as Git, let all the team members retrieve a completely history of the project. This allows developers or other stakeholders to use the local Git repositories of any of the teammates, even if the main server goes down at any point in time. So the next question is, what is the blue-green deployment pattern? Now, this is a method of continuous deployment that is commonly used to reduce downtime. This is where traffic is transformed from one instance to another. In order to include a fresh version of the code, we must replace the code with a new code version. The new version exists in a green environment and the old version exists in a blue environment. Now, after making changes to the previous version, we need a new instance from the old one 
to execute a newer version of the instance. So this was the right answer. Next is what is continuous testing? Continuous testing constitutes of running of automated test as part of the software delivery pipeline to provide instant feedback on the business risk present in the most recent release in order to prevent problems in step switching in the software delivery life cycle and to allow development teams to receive immediate feedback. Every build is continually tested in this manner. Now, this results in a significant increase in speed in a developer's productivity as it eliminates the requirement of rerunning all the tests after each update and project rebuilding. Now, let's move to the next question. That is, what is automation testing? Now, test automation or manual testing automation is the process of automating a manual procedure in order to test an application or system. Automation testing entails the use of independent testing tools that allow you to develop test scripts that can be run repeatedly without the need for human interaction. Next question is how to automate testing in DevOps lifecycle. Now developers are obliged to commit all the source code changes to a shared DevOps repository. Every time a change is made in the code, Jenkins like continuous integration tools will, will grab it from this common repository and deploy it for continuous testing which is done by tools like Selenium. So why is continuous testing important for DevOps? Any modification to the code may be tested immediately with continuous testing. This prevents concerns like quality issues and releases delays that might occur whenever big bang testing is delayed until the end of the cycle. In this way, continuous testing allows for high quality and more frequent releases. So next question is, how do you push a file from your local system to the GitHub repository using Git? Now first, connect the local repository to your remote repository. Now Git remote add origin and then you can see the code. And the second step that you need to do is push your file to the remote repository. Next question is, what is the process for reverting a commit that has already been pushed and made public? Now there are two ways that you can revert a commit. Remove or fix the bad file in a new commit and push it to the remote repository. Then commit it to the remote repository using this command. And second is create a new commit that undoes all the changes that were made in the bad commit. You can use this command for it. Next is explain the difference between git fetch and git pull. Now git fetch only downloads new data from a remote repository. Whereas git pull updates current head branch with the latest changes from the remote server. Second difference is git fetch does not integrate any new data into working files. Whereas git pull downloads new data and integrates it with the current working files. Git fetch users can run a git fetch at any time to update the remote tracking branches. Whereas git pull tries to merge remote changes with your local ones. Now coming to the next question. Explain the concept of branching in Git. Suppose you are working on an application and you want to add a new feature to the app. You can create a new branch and build a new feature on that branch. By default, you always work on the master branch and the circles on the branch represent various commits made on the branch. So after you are done with all the changes, you can merge it with the master branch. Next question is, explain the master slave architecture of Jenkins. Now Jenkins master pulls the code from the remote GitHub repository every time there is a code commit. It distributes the workload to all the Jenkins slaves and when requested from the Jenkins master, the slaves carry out, build, test and produce test reports. Now next question is which file is used to define dependency in Maven? Build.xml, pom.xml, dependency.xml or version.xml. Well, the correct answer is perm.xml. Next question that we are going to cover is explain the two types of pipelines in Jenkins along with their syntax. Now Jenkins provides two ways of developing a pipeline code, scripted and declarative. Now scripted pipeline is based on Groovy script as their domain specific language. One or more node blocks do the core work throughout the entire pipeline. Now the syntax is Execute the pipeline or any of its stages on any available agent. Define the build stage. Perform steps related to building stage. Now define the test stage. 
perform steps related to the test stage and define the deploy stage and perform steps related to the deploy stage. Now, declarative pipeline provides a simple and friendly syntax to define a pipeline. Here, the pipeline block defines the work done throughout the pipeline. So the syntax follows is first execute the pipeline or any of its stage on any available agent, define the build stage, perform steps related to building stage, then define the test stage, perform stages related to the test stage, define the deploy stage and perform steps related to the deploy stage. Well, this was the code for declarative pipeline. And the last question for this video is explain how you can set up a Jenkins job. To create a Jenkins job, we go to the top page of Jenkins, choose the new job option and then select build a freestyle software project. Now the elements of this freestyle job are optional triggers for controlling when Jenkins builds, optional steps for gathering data from the build like collecting Java doc, testing results and or, or archiving artifacts. A build script that actually does the work or the optional source code management system like Subversion or CVS. Well, there you go. These are some of the most common DevOps interview questions that you might come across while attending an interview. As a DevOps engineer, in-depth knowledge of processes, tools, and relevant technology is essential. And these DevOps interview questions and answers will help you get some knowledge about some of these aspects. In addition, you must also have a holistic understanding of the products, services, and systems in place. Also, here's an inspiring success story from one of our satisfied learners who have propelled their careers with DevOps. This can help you boost your confidence, make a firm decision in this field. Do watch it. My whole life here. I started my IT journey with Accenture three years ago. I joined there as a cloud architect. There, I worked with AWS and Azure technologies. Anyway, looking for a higher paying job. And DevOps seemed the right career choice. So I decided to go with the postgraduate program in DevOps in collaboration with Caltech CTME. The course was divided into modules and we had assignments. I was really impressed by how many job interviews I landed after I added the certification to my portfolio. And now I am earning 40% more than my previous job. It didn't only boost my career, but also my confidence. Well, this was all about this video. If you like this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, if you have any question, then please feel free to ask away in the comment section. Our team will reach out to you as soon as possible. Thank you and... Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.